So we'll get started in our Sunday worship service. Uh, today is July 12, uh, 2020, and uh, the service will be titled, Not By Bread Alone. And our sermon series starts today, a four-week sermon series on Seek, and you will find our main verses will be from Jeremiah 29, verses 12 through 14, if you want to follow along in the service. And so now let us lift up our voices and praise God. For that wonderful song, thank you, every uh, praise band. Uh, again, sorry for the. I know that we're, we're still working on figuring out better ways for the sound to come clear on Zoom, but uh, Zoom's not the, the best for for sound wise. But uh, we will do what we, with what we got. Um, 
So good morning to everybody. Uh, I want to just welcome you this morning again. And we've got some, uh, uh, want to go ahead and welcome the Holy Spirit at this time and uh, do a little bit of prayer. Uh, we've had, it's been a, uh, it's been a week of many uh, things. And so we just want to lift up our, our uh, concerns to God uh, this morning. So uh, let us welcome the Holy Spirit. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Lord, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit here into our homes, into our cars, into our service, and all of those of you that are on Facebook as well. Lord, we ask that you bless this time, open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to this message, that it be you that speak and not me, or not us. Lord, move us in, in the Spirit. Lord, we lift up, uh, we continue to lift up Jack and Linda, Lord. We ask that you continue to work in their lives, Lord, and and continue to uh, do more work, miracles in their chemotherapies and things of that nature. Continue to heal Chris Love, um, Lord, as he, uh, Chris Loving, as he continues to get better and as he gets ready for, uh, if there's any sports that will be allowed, but he will be ready. Lord, we also ask for Elida Ferron. Lord, we lift up the Rubalcaba family as they have uh, lost a loved one, uh, their father due to COVID. Uh, Lord, we lift up the Serna family and Castillo family as they lost their mother as well to COVID. Uh, Lord, we, uh, we continue to lift up uh, Aubrey and her family, uh, Mike and his family, his uncle has uh, stage four cancer, his mom. Lord, we ask that you continue to work in their lives, Lord, as well. Lord, we continue to lift up our very own Anna and Richard as uh, uh, their grandson and, and son, Alan. Uh, is in the hospital right now, Lord. They don't, not sure what it is, but Lord, we ask that you uh, uh, can heal his lungs and that uh, if it's COVID, that he'd be able to get through the COVID, Lord. And Miss Anna, also for her vertigo, Lord, we ask that you, uh, Lord, find a way to heal her with that as well. Lord, we also ask for all the people that are, right now, um, so many cases have been coming out on a daily basis. Lord, we ask that you be with all the people in the hospitals as the hospitals, some hospitals here in town are at capacity and have shut down their ER. And, uh, and Lord, we just ask that you uh, be with all those medical staff and all the people, Lord, and with especially the ones that are with any kind of sickness, not just COVID, but all the other people that are in the hospital as well for other things. Lord, we lift up all our first responders, our law enforcement, our military, uh, Lord, all those that are working in immigration, Lord, I involve from attorneys to, uh, to Border Patrol, to ICE, to everyone, Lord, and, you know, for all our leaders, Lord, that they find ways to better that situation. Lord, we also ask, Lord, that you be with just our city, our government, our state, and our nation. Lord, we ask all these things and we lift them up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so now... Um, we will have uh, some announcements that our very own Paul will be giving to you. Take it away, Paul. Hi. Are we on? There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of things going on in the life of the church. And so, Into the Galaxy, our virtual VBS. Yes, it's going to be on Facebook, July 20th through 24th. It's going to be fun. Fun on a bun for the kids. Our children and family ministries director, Aranda, has been posting activities and lessons on Facebook. So, uh, seeing as we're not able to be here, hey, we can still do crafts with the kiddos. Thank you, Aranda. Daily devotions with Pastor Sal, 9 a.m. on YouTube and Facebook. Check it out. Wednesday Bible study, Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m. It takes place using the Zoom platform. And if you don't know what that is, click on it, download it to your computer, run it, and uh, be sure to type in the, uh, you know, the meeting that you want to join, and it'll take you right there. Couples ministry, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. This is Ecclesiastes 4.12. This takes place also on the Zoom platform. Monday night, 6.30 p.m. For more information, call 9. One five, and he killed it before I could finish reading it. Nine one five two two six six zero three one. There we go. Sisters in Christ, they're meeting on Zoom, like everything else. 
get to know him by Zoom. Ladies and gentlemen, men's ministry will be next Saturday. And currently, yes, we are meeting at 8.30 in the morning on the Zoom platform. But we are also considering moving it to the afternoon because Saturday mornings, when it's nice and cool out, is when us guys like to do stuff. So if you want stuff at your house repaired, let your husband do Zoom in the afternoon instead. Ladies and gentlemen, how can we pray for you? Email your prayer requests to prayer at the ridge ep.com. Tithes and offerings can be mailed to the Western Hills Church office at 524 Thunderbird Drive, or you can give electronically by going to our website, www.theridgeep.com, and click on the Give tab. Stay connected. Like us on Facebook, The Ridge El Paso. Instagram, The Ridge EP. YouTube, The Ridge Church EP. For email, sign up at www.theridgeep.com stroke connect hyphen to. And now it's children's time. But Aranda is not here. She's on, Zoom. She's on Zoom. Cool. Hi. Hey, there she is. Cool. Now, if only I knew how to switch her over. Anyway, I'm going to turn this thing off. Um, I want. Good morning, guys. I'm sorry I'm not there today. I had some car trouble, but I don't know if you guys can see this really cool hat I made this morning. It's kind of like a little, I think uh, it looks like an alien hat, kind of. Um, I don't know if any of the kids are on. I don't know if Aubrey's kids are there. I miss you guys already. Um, but I just have a little message for you all today. Um, if anybody has a best friend, I have a best friend. Um, just remember uh, to be nice to them. Like God is our best friend. We can tell him everything. We can tell him our secrets. He can pray for us. He can be there for us. Just like our best friends are there. Uh, my sister is my best friend. She's been my best friend forever, for a long time. And she's always been there for me. And I can tell her whatever I need. And I can, she can pray for me. We can be there for each other. Sometimes we get mad at each other. And sometimes best friends do that. But we forgive each other, just like God forgives each other. So just love one another. And be there for each other. And be your best friends. Be best friends with someone. And just love them. Now I want to talk about my, my little cool, um, I don't know what to call this. It's not a hat, like a kind of like a little tiara maybe. Uh, have you guys heard where we're going in two weeks? We're going to space, to the galaxy. If you guys haven't signed up your kiddos yet, sign them up for VBS. It's going to be so much fun. It is going to be virtual. I am very sad it's going to be virtual this year, but it's going to be so much fun. We're going to go visit the aliens or whatever is up there in the galaxy. We're going to see so many stars, so many beautiful things, so many planets. So join us. If you guys have any questions, uh, please let us know. Uh, you guys can email me uh, at Aranda at the Ridge EP. Or if you guys have any questions, you guys can Facebook us. Um, I will attach the link. We've extended uh, the sign up until Wednesday. So you guys can go ahead and sign up your kiddos and get them in there. We will have package. Um, package crafts for them so they can pick up next Sunday before we go to the galaxy. And I look forward to seeing all of you. And uh, we'll do a closing prayer. I'm not sure if any of the kids are there. If they are, please bow your heads for us. Father God, thank you so much for having us here today. Uh, most of us are not there today, but we are here all together virtually. And your presence, we still feel it from home, from Zoom, from Facebook, wherever we are. And we are so thankful for that. We pray for all the people working during this COVID that seems just to fluctuate and it's going up and down. And we don't know where it's going right now. But we know you have a plan. We pray for them. We pray for their health. We pray that you protect them and be with them and be with their families. For the people who are struggling with COVID, that you may heal them and give their family comfort for those who have lost one. We pray for all the children that are gonna be missing school this year. We pray for their education and their parents and everything. We pray for those children that are missing Sunday school, that are missing God, 
some people don't have the resources or we're not able to gather, Lord, that you may remind them that you love them and that are there with them. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for that wonderful prayer, Ananda. Thank you. Uh, forgot to unmute <laughs> for those that are in Zoom. And so, uh, yes, uh, indeed, we will be going into the galaxy on July the 20th to the 24th, uh, July 19th after the service uh, between 12 and 1 in the afternoon. Uh, when you Once you sign up your, uh, your family, uh, you can come and pick up your uh, items here. Uh, we will have a drive-by pickup at the Ridge. That's located at 5500 Donovan Drive. Uh, we are in Suite C. And so we'll be here in the parking lot from 12 to 1 next Sunday uh, to deliver those uh, packages uh, for the kids uh, for their uh, BBS. So uh, we look forward to that. And so now uh, we will have a little uh, prayer. We will pray the Lord's Prayer together. And then we'll, we'll get into a uh, message here today. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, in the glory forever. Amen. And so now our very own Paul will give us a little message. Take it away, Mr. Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the time that normally we uh, pass the plate around. And, uh, you know, we can't do that at least physically, but we can do it virtually, and so I would like to talk a little bit about your weight. If you're like me, maybe you weigh just a little bit too much. In the year 2010, Americans spent over $60 billion on weight loss programs. That's pretty incredible. $60 billion. That's a lot of money. That's a lot more than some countries produce in their gross national product for a year. In fact, think about it. Most of the world's problems with food have to deal with too little food and not too much food. Crazy fact, according to the Borgen Project, annual expenditures of 19 billion between now and, well, 14 years from now, could eliminate global starvation and malnutrition around the world. That's around the world. That means that what we spent in the year 2010 to quit being overweight, we could have fed the rest of the world. Think about that. Ladies and gentlemen, the reality is, well, it comes down to one word. Others. Others. It's a word that sometimes we don't necessarily uh, want to adopt. And, um, of course, many of you know my uh, ancestry in the church has been through the Salvation Army. And they asked the founding father, the general of the Salvation Army, William Booth, if he wanted to send a message out at the beginning of the previous century to the world. And what would that message be? And his message was one word, others. Philippians 2, 4 it calls us to look to the interests of others more than our own. And one way that we can do that is, well, that $60 billion that we spent in 2010 to lose weight, maybe we could funnel some of that money towards the church. Maybe we could uh, give and give generously, because your giving has a direct impact on the lives of others. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, you can mail your check to the office there at uh, Thunderbird, or you can give electronically. I'm going to be out there in the parking lot passing this sucker around. So, I look forward to seeing you guys in just a moment or two. All right, thank you so much uh, there. Uh, thank you, Paul, for that uh, message. Again, if you would like to give, uh, you can give in different ways. You can give uh, by sending a check to uh, 524 Thunderbird. Uh, that's El Paso, Texas, 79912, uh, care of the Ridge. And then also you can go to our web page at www.theridgeep.com. Uh, and, uh, click on the menu tab, click on give, and then you can give your offering there. And so thank you for that. Um, and so we will be lifting our voices up to heaven as the uh, basket is passed in the parking lot and just uh, reflect and you pray on what God moves you to give. Amen.
see how there's a lot of echo okay so I will go in front of the other camera You mute it, best yourself. There we go. All right. Is that, does, does that sound better? <laughs> does that work now? Okay. And so, uh, what I'm saying is that uh, our message for today is going to be not by bread alone. And we know that that's a wonderful scripture by God uh, in that Jesus responds not by saying, Okay, I'll turn the stones into bread, or okay, I'll do, you know, because I'm hungry. You know, I was saying that I love the way that Matthew puts it because it's the enemy t- 
intense him after 40 days. After he had already fasted, after he was at his weakest, uh, you know, as a human, uh, because, you know, again, he was uh, fully human and fully divine. And so he's going through all this, and then the enemy is when, it's when the enemy comes and attacks him, right? Doesn't that seem like us in our lives? When we're at our most tired, uh, that's when he comes and, and tries to wreak havoc. And, you know, I think in, in our nation especially, you know, this message is, is good because we were at a time in our nation where all the political stuff that was going on was just tiring. Tiring. And you hear one thing and then another, and you hear the battles of everything going on. And then in the middle of all that division, we get this pandemic. And so it just seems like it was one thing after another, and we think, you know, so right now Jeremiah fits so perfect because why? When the pandemic came, we thought, oh, okay, it's just going to be a couple weeks. We'll shut down for a couple weeks and we'll be fine, right? And we thought, you know, just like the prophets were telling the elders in Babylon and those in Jerusalem, oh, don't worry, you're only going to be in Babylon for a year or two. Don't don't get married. Don't don't set any roots. Don't worry about it. You're going to be back to Jerusalem in a year or two. And and the reason I picked 20, Jeremiah 29, 12 through 14 is because we know that Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us of God's promise, right? A plan for the future, plans to prosper us, not to harm us. I'm paraphrasing, of course. But if you dig deeper into what that means, it's a very difficult promise to accept. And <laughs> And I'm here and I'm saying, okay, what, what, what makes it so difficult, Sal? Come on. Uh, you know, God promises us a bright future. What's so difficult about that? Well, the difficult part about it is that um, he was telling the elders that they were going to be there for 70 years before they went back to Jerusalem. Which meant that for the elders, they weren't going to be going back to Jerusalem. It was going to be their kids and their kids' kids. So when we use that scripture, we have to be very careful. 2911, are we willing to wait for God's time? And are we willing to say that maybe we never see that blessing, but our kids will? And so it's a very difficult scripture. But I think 29, 12 through 14 is a wonderful, even bigger promise for us, right? Especially during this time. Because in the midst of this pandemic, we know that what does 12 tell us? Pray to me, and I will hear you. Our loving God in heaven hears our prayers. He hears our voice. He hears every single lament, every single thing that we go through. He knows it already, right? He knows what we go through. He knows what's in our heart. He knows what we're asking for. But he wants to hear it from his children. He wants his children to come to him, just like we do when our kids, we tell our kids, right? You know, if something hurts, you, you, you can tell me, you know, or if you feel a certain way, please tell me, you know. Especially nowadays with, with all the social media, bullying, and everything that goes on in the schools, um, we never know when our kids are feeling depressed. Or they're feeling like they can't come to someone. And man, that breaks our hearts as parents because we, we, we you know, we love them. And we tell them, please, you can come to us. Speak to me. Let me know when I can do it. If I can't help you, I'll find the help for you. Right? Yeah. What more does God want for his children to get on their knees and tell them their heart? Right? God listens to us. And so, so how do we do this? So this week, on, 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 uh, not on bread alone, the emphasis is going to be on scripture and fasting. How do we seek God and how do we find him during this time is through scripture and fasting, right? Not by bread alone, right? Not by bread alone. Jesus sought God for 40 days and 40 nights in the desert, in the wilderness. And scripture says he didn't have a single thing to eat. And 
then the devil comes. Right? As he always does. The most opportune time to cause disruption and to tempt him. So what do we know about scripture? Okay, well let's go to 2 Timothy verses chapter 3 verses 12 through 17. Um, if those of you that are at home uh, or anybody here, um, it's probably going to be a good time to take some notes if you like to take some notes or just some mental, mental notes. Um, right here, Paul is writing a letter to Timothy and he's letting him know uh, how to continue because, of course, Timothy knows during this time uh, the Christians are being persecuted, right? In many places, uh, especially in Rome, uh, Nero, Nero is the emperor and Nero is... Uh, lighting up Christians like candles, human candles, to his dinner parties, right? He's dipping human beings, Christians, in wax and lighting them up on fire to be candles in their parties, right? And so during this time, he knows that people are being persecuted, so he's sending a letter to Timothy to lift him up, to tell him, you know what I've gone through, right? Paul, in the first part of the, the, the chapter, he's telling them, you know what I've gone through. You know that I've been in prison. You know that I've, I've been beaten. I've been, uh, you know, uh, saved by God and things of that nature. And so he's giving them courage. He's giving Timothy to keep on doing the good work, right? We, just like us, we got to keep on doing the work of the kingdom. Amen? And so he tells them this. Uh, verse 12 says, Indeed, all who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But wicked people and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived. But as for you, okay, this is the message for us. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believe, knowing from whom you learned it. Right? Well, who do we, where do we learn it from? And how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. In other words, the Bible. All scripture. I mean, let me say that again. All scripture is inspired by God. Another translation says God breathed. And is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. So that everyone who believes in God may be proficient Equipped for every good work. Wow. Isn't that, isn't that awesome? In Scripture, it's God breathed. What does God breathe mean? What does it inspired mean? It means that the Holy Spirit spoke to that author. Yes, it may have been the author that wrote it down, but it was inspired by this Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit is the one that spoke to him. And the Holy Spirit is the one that we know that we learned the Scripture from, right? Yes, we learned it from our teachers, from our pastors, from our priests all our lives. But it came from God. So we know that it came from Him. That's who taught us the scripture. And so we're equipped for every good work, right? The Bible gives us instructions for everything we need. Even during this time of pandemic. What well, time of uncertainty? Right now I would say more time of uncertainty, right? When is this thing going to end? Some, some scientists say, well, in a year we'll have a vaccine. Some say six months, some say two years. Some say it's going to be like the Spanish flu and we're not going to see any, anything better for two years. Who knows, right? But in the midst of this, how do we prepare ourselves spiritually and how do we strengthen ourselves and rejuvenate ourselves? We dig into scripture. We get into scripture and, and, and um, uh, John Wesley, who was the uh, founder of the Methodist movement, uh, not the Methodist church, but the Methodist movement, because he technically didn't start the church yet, <clears throat> but he started a movement. And then what, what, the, what was the movement? The movement was basically to be more Christian, to, to seek Christian perfection, to seek God, right? Uh, spiritually, uh, for us to live a devoted life to God. That was that was his main thing. It wasn't anything he, he uh, uh, he just did it himself. You know, he wrote every day for 65 years. There we have the actual writings uh, in several universities. And uh, my professor of, of America, uh, United Methodist History actually did the editor of his letters, um, uh, Ted Campbell. And so Dr. Ted Campbell, 
Uh, he's one of the ones that's in the Methodist uh, Society and, and worldwide. So, you know, graduate from Oxford and whatnot. So, and what he was telling us is um, the thing about Wesley is that he just, that's all he wanted to do. He just wanted people to seek God. That's it. That was his main emphasis. And he went out to seek the poor. He went to preach to the poor, right? The people that were forgotten. He went out and <laughs> even said, I will make myself as vile. In other words, he didn't believe that you should be preaching outside of the church <laughs> in the church setting because he was an Anglican priest, but he still did it anyway. He went into the fields, he went into the communities, and he prayed. He started these societies, and what do societies do? So when we read scripture, we have to do worshipful reading. Okay, what does worshipful reading mean? Okay, for this end, um, it is God is here in his presence, I open, I read his book for this end to find the way to heaven. So that's what we do when we do worshipful reading. We read so that we can find our way to heaven, right? Uh, we, we read because we want to know what God's will is. So it's worshipful reading. And then we have to do systematic reading, right? We do, uh, we read and we study the scripture, right? And what do we do when we do that? Well, we have to know who the author is. We have to know who he's writing to. Uh, we need to know who the audience is so that we can better interpret the scripture, right? We read it, and then we see what we pray on it so that we know what we think what God is telling us. Okay, first we need to also know what is God telling us. All right, so uh, worshipful reading and then systematic reading. So we have to read with a purpose. Now, the other thing that God taught us or Jesus taught us in that moment is he probably did, uh, what we could do is purposeful reading. So first is worshipful reading, right? We seek God and find our way to heaven. What is, what is God telling me? What do I need to do in order for me to build treasures in heaven, right? <clears throat> we can't earn heaven. We know that. That's already been gifted to us by the grace of God. His sacrifice on the cross has already gifted us grace. No one deserves to go to heaven. No one, but God still gave us that gift, right? He gave it to us freely, openly. It's ours, but what do we do with it? What do we do with that gift? And so worshipful reading. Then we have systematic reading. We read it systematically. We understand it. We study it, and then we pray to see what is God telling me? How do I apply this to my life? And the third thing is purposeful reading purposeful reading. It says, but purposeful resolutions are never intended to be exclusively private. Full application means that we seek to teach others that we, what we have learned. Wesley put it plainly, what I thus learn, that I teach. So there's a purpose for it, right? We, we learn it, and the purpose is to spread the gospel, right? Okay, so, so I do my worshipful reading. I do my systematic reading. Okay, now I know my purpose. So, what if I'm not ready? You know, there's too many distractions in my life. What do I do? Well, Jesus taught us what do we do it is sometimes in order for us to seek him and find him, we have to actually do some fasting. Right? Uh, what is it that we, uh, we, we do normally as Christians, you know, we, we do fasting in Lent season, right? What do we do? We sometimes we give up meat. Um, we'll, you know, <laughs> we'll give up soda for 40 days, and then after that's over, we drink a whole case of soda. Um, and, and the same with other things that have a little bubbly in it, too. So, <laughs> um, but that's not what fasting is about. I mean, I mean you can fast to not eat chocolate for a whole month or, you know, 40 days or, or you know what, I'm not going to curse for 40 days or I'm not going to uh, say uh, uh, anything derogatory to anybody for 40 days, right? Um, guess what? Here's, here's an epiphany. Why don't you continue it after the 40 days? How's that? Right? Wouldn't that be something? But 
fasting means that we spend time that we would normally do something else for the will of God or for the kingdom of God. That's what fasting means. Now, sometimes that means that we don't actually do something for the kingdom, but we do something to strengthen us, to prepare ourselves, to say, you know what? I need to love myself first before I can give love to someone else. Right? I need, God, I need you to strengthen me first. I need to love myself first. And you know what? That's okay. Because God, what, is, what do we learn just a little while ago? God listens to his children. He listens to our words. And here's a wonderful reminder of just how we can build strength with fasting. Because I think that, I think the contrary, I think that the devil didn't pick the most weakest time where Jesus was. I think he was at his strongest. I think that he fasted, he got himself spiritually ready for what he was going to do in those 40 days and 40 nights that the devil picked the wrong time to mess with him. Because it was in his strongest. It was when he had already meditated. He had already spent time with God. He had already been knowing and practicing what his, what his message was going to be, his gospel message, his ministry. He was ready. Amen? And I think that it was when he was in his strongest. But see, God's ways are greater than our ways. Christ's thought, God's thoughts are greater than our thoughts. And so are they greater than the devil. Each and every time. Because we know how the story ends. God has the victory. But the devil's trying to take as many as he can right now before he's ultimately put into the pit of hell. And so here is that wonderful message, the example that Jesus did. And we're in Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came. The tempter came. And that's what Satan means, the accuser, the tempter, right? He always wants to make us look bad. The tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every what? Every word that comes from the mouth of God. We know that scripture is God-breathed. Scripture is inspired by God, by the Holy Spirit. So automatically, it is from the mouth of God. That is what gives us the strength. And he goes on. Verse 5 says, Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. I believe it's Psalm 91 that he was quoting. The devil's a little bit coming, but Jesus says, Jesus to him said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. See, because the devil didn't know, he forgot a little part in that Psalm 91. In that Psalm 91, it also states, For God's will. Okay, he will keep you from getting hit on the stones below. If it's going to be for his will. Right? So, but God, of course, Satan doesn't want us to know that, right? He doesn't want God's will. He wants his own. Right? He wants his own will. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you, and you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan. Let's all say that. Away with you, Satan. For it is written, 
that say, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Only him. Then the devil left him and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Folks, that is us. When we fast, when we take time away from the busyness, when we take time away from whatever is keeping us from God, spend some of that time. There's different ways that you can even do it to where it helps you even in your own health. Not just mentally and spiritually, but also in your own health. You know, there's such things as water fasting. Water fasting, where you, uh, from 12 in the, in the p.m. to 8, well, you can do it however you want. Some do it from 6 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon, whatever. During those times, from 6 to 4 or 12 to 8, are the times that you eat. You eat your, your snacks, and the, and the meals portions are supposed to be, they say, the size of your fist. But that's it. After that time, from 8 in the night to 11.59 the next morning, all you do is water. Water, water, water. Uh, or it could be from after 4 to 5.59 in the morning, depending on what your schedule is, right? But during those times, we want you to take some time and fast. And there's different ways to fast. Uh, you can fast uh, by yourself. You can fast you know, at night, during the day, in the morning. But we need, you need to rejuvenate your body. You need to, a time to just spend with God. Or challenge yourself and say, I'm not going to eat a single piece of food until I have read scripture and prayed and spent some time with God. Right? Let me feed my spirit first, and then I'll feed my body. Because we live on not by bread alone, but by every word of God. And in the same way, you will strengthen yourself, you will find yourself in a more spiritually strong situation to fight the temptations of the enemy. And that's what we need to do right now. All this stuff, all these distractions that are happening in the world are just tricks of the enemy. I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that they don't actually exist. I'm not saying that coronavirus doesn't exist. What I'm saying is that the enemy will use whatever chaos he can create to create doubt, fear, and just all kinds of disruption in your life. But we need to be like that saying says, when the devil saw me with my head down, he thought he had me until he heard me say amen. And then he knew that we had him. Pray, fast, read scripture, seek him, and you will find him. And he will take you out of this land that you are in exile. Just like he did, and just like he always does. <laughs> he gets us out of everything, right? Mike mentioned it during Father's Day when he sang. He said, it's like that footprints poem. We sometimes see one track on the beach, one pair of, one trail of one pair of shoes or footprints in the sand, but that's when he carries us. So go to him. He wants to hear from his children. Fast, take time to spend with him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you, Lord, uh, this reminder that we live on not bread alone. That we live by every word that is God breathed and inspired by you. Help us to find the strength to fast, to spend time with you. Oh Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you bring to us for another day. We thank you for this wonderful service. And Lord, we just thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so now let us lift up our voices to the heaven above, the God that's in heaven above. And if you need prayer, please, during this time, uh, you can chat on the chat, and those that are in Zoom, 
uh, send your prayers to us. We'll make sure that we get those uh, written down and we can have pray for you. Uh, send your prayers to prayer at the ridge ep .com. Uh, We will pray for you. We are a community of prayer here. Those of you on Facebook, if you want to send your, uh, you can send us a messenger. Well, your prayers, if you want to keep them private or email them to us, or just uh, let us know that we'll be convinced up to you in, in uh, comments there in Facebook. So uh, now we turn it over to our talented team. Here's the praise team. Be reassured that the God who loves you more than anyone in this world 
will hear your prayer, your prayers, and when you seek him, seek him, and you will, you will find him. He is there waiting for you. Be safe this week and join us next week as we worship again.